Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to respond to a comment I received from a representative of the Smile Clinic of Utah about the differences between the 3-on-6 and the all-on-4 implant system. It was a thoughtful comment and I really appreciate the willingness to engage in conversation. But there are a few things I need to address, so let's dive in. Here's a comment I received. For brevity's sake, I won't read it, but I'll go over it with my responses. Please pause the video if you'd like to read it. However, it mentions that most of the information I provided about 3-on-6 is inaccurate and invites me to visit their clinic to observe a surgery. I truly appreciate this invitation, but I'd like to clarify a few points based on both my 14 years of experience as a board-certified periodontist and three years of periodontics residency training, as well as my broader research on these implant systems. In addition, before I get into the meat and bones of this video, I'd like to also address that I've spoken to multiple other specialists ranging from periodontists to prosthodontists with years of experience and training on both FP1, 3-on-6, and FP3, all-on-4. And I asked them about their thoughts on exactly this topic, and they all agree that patient candidacy and expectations should be limited with a 3-on-6 FP1 type of solution. And although many people could technically be a 3-on-6 FP1 patient, long-term aesthetic results and implant health are much more predictable on an all-on-4 FP3 type of solution. Now, this is a very important point. What I mean by aesthetics is that if people are willing to deal with longer teeth and more squarish teeth and long-term papilla loss, then FP1 3-on-6 will be an option for more patients. However, if a patient cares about the aesthetics of their teeth, then these discussions and expectations must be discussed. Also a disclaimer, please understand that this is not any sort of attack on Dr. Roberts. I'm sure he's a great guy, but as you stated in your comment, my intention is truly to just get information out there to help others. Also, unlike Dr. Roberts, who has ownership of the branded 3-on-6 protocol, I have no ownership or vested interest in all-on-4 because FP3 and FP1 are just implant treatment protocols. They've been around for decades. Finally, I do both FP1 and FP3 in my practice. In fact, I did an FP1 two weeks ago and have another one coming up shortly, so I'm not only eager to do FP3 all on four in my practice, nor do I refuse to do FP1. If any of my viewers seem to get lost with any of the terminology of principles throughout this video, please refer to the video description below as I will have important links to other important videos I made about this very topic. First of all, I'd like to address the statement you made, and I'll list it below. But the basic gist of it was that you were saying that cross arch stabilization causes less stress to be on the bone and on the implants and therefore makes the bone stronger. This statement defies everything I've learned in implant dentistry. The goal is to reduce the stress on the implants throughout the healing period and over the long term. In my 14 years, the most common reason for implant failure is excessive load, whether due to improper implant sizing or improper prosthetic design. No offense, but this statement is the complete opposite of what we try to achieve in implant dentistry. Second, it was mentioned that about 90% of all on four candidates could and should have received three on six instead. That's quite a bold statement. In reality, three on six requires more bone than all on four, which limits its applicability. Many patients, especially those who've suffered bone loss, both the valuable buccal bone and the interproximal bone simply don't have the bone structure for predictable long-term implant health and aesthetics. Yes, scrafting can help, but that adds complexity, time, and cost, which isn't ideal for everyone. Also, I'd like to apologize about not knowing whether nowadays 3-on-6 was still segmenting their bridges or doing a single unit design. I personally, as well as others, are in favor of the single arch design as it allows for cross arch stabilization and therefore less stress, less bone loss, and less implant failure with a single unit design. Now, hygiene is another point that they brought up. While it's true that food can trap under an all-on-4 prosthesis, with proper prosthesis, meaning teeth, design, along with proper hygiene practices like regular cleanings and the right tools, these issues can be prevented. As for the papilla and gum aesthetics, maintaining natural gums around a three on six isn't as simple as it sounds, especially for patients with bone or tissue loss. While bone and tissue grafting can help, it doesn't always guarantee perfect results and some patients may still experience gum recession or visible implants over time. Also, please evaluate this example of an FP1 solution that an Italian world-famous prosthodontist posted on his Instagram. You can see in the seven-year long-term photo the interproximal bone resorption and gum loss that occurred between the teeth despite the soft tissue sculpting that was done. If the papilla is not supported by interproximal bone, you get this type of gum loss, which results in horrible food traps. I couldn't imagine eating anything and always dealing with things getting caught in these spaces non-stop. And there was also a claim that all on four is 13 times more likely to break compared to three on six. This is an extraordinary claim. And while I'd love to see the independent studies backing it up, 
the research I'm familiar with, along with all the, the all on four FP3 and FP1 cases that we do here at this practice does not support this. And again, I've asked other friends and family about this. Both systems, when executed well, offer strong, long-lasting results for patients. But the simpler design of the all on four actually makes it easier and less costly to manage in the long run. Also, as long as a patient is under warranty, why would this matter? This also stresses why it's important for a patient to see a provider who properly warranties his product. In the end, both 3-on-6 and all-on-4 are viable solutions, but they're not one size fits all. While the 3-on-6 might work well for certain patients, the all-on-4 has been proven time and time again to be a reliable, cost-effective solution for a wide variety of cases, especially for those with bone loss. Thanks again to Mike at the Smile Clinic for making the invitation. I think it's important that we continue having these conversations to provide the best care for our patients. If you're considering dental implants, make sure you consult with a trusted professional who takes your specific situation into account. As always, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more insights on dental care and implant surgery. And if you really want to delve into this topic, make sure you check out the next video and it goes deep into detail all about three on six versus all on four. I'll see you next time.